Hello and welcome back to Manor Lords and our slightly more relaxed uh, sense of doing things. So uh, yeah, when we left off, we had a stone cutter currently in progress of being built. And oh yes, oh yeah, look at what we got going on here. Look at what we got going on here. This is absolutely fantastic. We've got a trader coming in with a sheep and the sheep is actually simulated as you can see actually hilarious that we're seeing that right now very very cool and oh yeah i now have enough wealth or i did have enough wealth i had 33 and now obviously i do not because you know we bought one yes we actually bought one it's amazing it's really really cool all right so what we're going to do is we're actually going to be placing a a person to do the sheep farm and yeah, look at this, look at this. We're also getting more houses available too. Anyway, uh, let me do the, uh, the the obligatory thing because obviously the game comes out on uh, April 26th. And if you want to add it to your wish list, if you haven't already, then you know there is a link in the description. Otherwise, there is also a Weaver workshop here that we are of course going to attempt to utilize. However... <laughs> I was not doing things in the right order, let's just say that, because obviously we had the uh, wonderful thing where we basically just went like, yeah, you know what, I'm not really knowing what I'm doing, basically, yes, that's kind of what happened, and so, yeah, we now have a situation where my clothing situation is still not very good no it's not very good at all however my villagers don't actually seem to be complaining about it too much even though we are at 64 percent you can see here they're not actually complaining about it at all they are literally just complaining about the fact that there aren't that many homes but we're building another one right here and that shouldn't be too bad and uh, yeah, so basically in my off screen time, there was a very, very small amount of time that I just took just to have a look around and see if I could sort of optimize things just a little bit. I don't really want to play too min maxi in this game because I feel like the whole fun of it is to actually just feel through the game from a very fresh perspective and just kind of do things as they arrive rather than attempting to do things in a super optimized fashion however that doesn't mean that we're not always going to do that you know it's just nice in my opinion at least for the first time to experience a game just really really organically and naturally you know i don't really want to power myself through all the way to waging war and stuff like that already yeah sure it's gonna it's definitely gonna happen don't get me wrong look there is an army and you can create new units and you can do all this crazy cool stuff already however i don't really want to do that yet yeah <laughs> i don't really want to do that and we're probably gonna need um well i don't even know actually whether we're gonna we're gonna need uh, money or anything like that but i'm actually just pretty happy just running around my little village here and doing what I can. And I'm hopeful that it's actually not going to be... <laughs> hopefully not going to be winter for that much longer. Because winter is very annoying. Let's just say that. Anyway, I also built a hunting post, as you can see. And the hunting limit is currently on 10, which is obviously perfect for me. Because we have wild animals of 20 over there. And if we were to make it so that these these guys would would hunt them, you know, to extinction, basically, then it would it would pretty much just be shooting us in the in the proverbial foot with a bow, you know, because these guys obviously have a bow, no doubt. And this fellow is actually going to hunt. Shall we? You know what? This is actually what's really cool about this game as well. You can basically follow these guys. And <laughs> that's the thing. Obviously, I showed a little bit of that in the in the previous episode, but. We didn't really show them doing anything specific. You can remove the UI as well. So you can actually look at how cinematic this actually is. I'm just going to actually zoom this zoom this little guy forward a little bit here and just make sure that we maybe we can see it. Maybe we, maybe we'll get to see it on the uh, on the screen. Oh, look at him. Look at him. Oh, he's actually sneaking. Look at him sneaking. Oh, well, obviously the hammer that he has right there is, well, there you go. The hammer's disappeared now, but that's that's wonderful. Okay, so as you can see, look at that. He actually shot the elk. 
I'm not sure what he's doing with the elk. Hopefully he's gonna go and um, he's gonna go and pick that up or whatever. I don't, I'm not sure whether it just magically goes into his inventory right now or something like that. I don't know, but I absolutely love the fact that every single one of those things is simulated in some way or another. And what do we have here? Oh, we got some iron. Oh, okay. Well, that's intriguing. Okay, yeah, we're going to have to do something about that. But obviously, first of all, I would like to get this stone up and running. So we're actually just going to change that priority to high. Obviously, I wanted to make sure that this was done first and that it is indeed done. So that's great. Now, uh, I'm not entirely sure what's going on here. Why does it not say that this has one type of food supplied on the marketplace it should be but maybe we don't have enough food at the moment i'm hopeful that maybe aha uh -huh, yes the food situation the wild animal situation where we i'm actually wondering let me see here so here's the thing from the hunting lodge we are going to gain the ability to create leather which is obviously fantastic uh, now, I'm, I'm wondering if there is anything else that we can do here that is going to provide us with something amazing. Mm, doesn't look like it, actually. Resources stolen by bandits. That's not actually from me. That is from somewhere else. So we don't need to worry about that too much. And then there's obviously administration here. This is a settler's camp. Basically, you place this on empty claimed territory in order to settle it. And you basically start off in a new region exactly the same as your initial start in your very first region which is very cool and uh, there you go the stone cutters camp is now complete which is wonderful so we're going to assign a family here and i think the best thing for me to do oh yeah by the way i also did construct a logging camp um wait a minute not the logging camp the forester's hut i continually get myself uh shall we say mixed up between all of the woodworking things all of the woodworking things all of the uh, you know those kinds of those kinds of buildings. I'm not entirely sure why, but yes, I do. Anyway, we're going to build some more burgage plots, obviously. But yeah, I built the forester's hut because that's extremely important for us. We really want to make sure that we have... Uh, I think I'll go for two here. There we go. And uh, basically what I want to try to do here... And this is actually a tip, okay? I, and usually I'm not going to give tips or anything like that because I generally don't consider myself to really know a huge amount about the game, this particular game specifically. Um, but that's the thing. One thing that I have noticed, and this is probably going to be something that you might want to consider very early on in your own playthrough, if you decide to pick up the game. And I'd highly recommend going for a logging camp. If that is that the actual thing that cuts them down, by the way, <laughs> let me let me actually just let me actually just see here. No, yes, yeah, yes, no, no, no. We, we we want we want the logging camp. There you go. All right. So yes, this is exactly what I was uh, what I was thinking. Another ruler's army was sighted. Okay, that might be a little bit problematic. We've received reports of a band of raiders roaming the nearby lands. Should we track their steps? Okay, raiders near. Okay, yeah, they're actually going to be coming over. Uh, in a year, that is. Unassigned at least one family. Yeah, that's fine. But I can't see the other thing. Why can't I see the ruler's army? Okay, there's the ruler's army. Where's he going? Okay, so he's there. He has insane troops. Look at that. He's got a, he's got a crazy amount of troops so far. That is absolutely amazing. All right, yeah. Well, anyway, I'm getting hugely sidetracked here. But I'm going to continue my train of thought. Okay, so... Basically, what I was going to recommend that you do, well, at least this is what I would do if I started again, all right? Because obviously I made mistakes initially, and what, what better way is there to learn than to make mistakes, right? I mean, that's the reason, you know? <laughs> anyway, logging camp, you want to build that straight away, because obviously you need, you need wood for basically everything. And then you want to build a forester's hut, and I, I'd highly recommend doing that as well as a, where is it now? Where's the other one? Uh, the saw pit. There we go. You want the saw pit as well because obviously you want to be able to construct a church and you need planks for a church. Keep an eye on the amount of planks that you have. And 
once you have 20, maybe you can stop it. It very much depends whether you want to trade them away. Maybe you don't have particularly good fertility in your soil or any of those things, right? Anyway, apart from that, you also want to make sure that you have the other thing. And now I don't know where the other thing is uh, that I have here. I th it's somewhere here, but I don't, don't remember where I actually placed it. So, unless I don't have it anymore... No, I, I'm sure... No, it's over here, isn't it? I think. I placed it over here, didn't I? Apparently, I don't remember where I placed it. So, I'm I'm stupid in that regard, but that's absolutely fine, I suppose. I mean, maybe I don't even have one. Do I have one? I'm pretty sure I have one. But yeah, anyway, the whole point is that this is what I wanted to uh, recommend that you go for. The Woodcutter's Lodge. Um, because that produces firewood. And it's extremely important, obviously, for you to produce firewood. Um, that's extremely, extremely important for the uh, for the winter, and well, for basically everything. And I actually don't even know where where that thing is that I placed. I thought I placed it next to the granary, basically. But um, yeah, it's it's because it's it's because it's winter. I just can't see anything. I don't know. I, I'm just really, really bad at seeing with the with the snow on, on, you know, covering everything. But those would be my recommendations for your first three to four, um, three to four, uh, you know, assignments for your people. Because if you do that initially, you're going to have an absolutely wondrous time because your logging camp is obviously going to fell trees. Your firewood producer building is going to, you know, get, get you firewood. And then your forester's hut is just going to replant all those trees. And inevitably, it's just going to create an infinite loop that is going to allow you to get infinite resources over time. So that's, in my opinion, one of the best ways that you can start off the game, at least from my perspective. I personally think so. And um, yeah, as you can see, look at this. Look at this. We've got our berries coming back. So I'm actually going to assign a family to uh, you know go and forage some berries now again. And, um, yeah, we are obviously going to need to assign... Are we going to need to unassign someone here? Actually, do I have someone on this? Yes, I do. Let's actually unassign that. Because I no longer need people to, uh, you know, get sheep and so on and so forth. And there we go. There's the sheep. Look, there's the sheep. Yes. All right. I'm so pleased. Can you tell? All right. Yeah. So we obviously do need to also get people to join us. So um, I'm hopeful that they are going to finish the construction on the plot over here. And of course, we are also going to have someone getting stone. And as you can see, they are getting stone. Now, the next thing that we really need to concentrate on that is going to be extremely important for us is getting... And this is, this is a thing that I probably should have gotten instead of a sheep. But because I was so incredibly excited about getting the sheep, and because I had spent so long talking about it in the previous episode, I thought, hey, you know what? We're locked in now. We have to get the sheep. Okay? But now, if you're smart, you don't want to get the sheep, alright? If you, you don't want to get the sheep. You want to get more oxen, okay? That's probably going to be the thing that you'd want to get in a... In an, in an ideal situation. Because, here's the thing. It's literally only... Um, it's literally only, what, uh, 20 to import, so it's actually pretty cheap, and I, in my opinion, it is highly recommended just to do that. It is very, very useful to do that. So what I'm also going to do is we're going to get more planks, and I'm going to actually, we've got 50 stone right now, which is actually fantastic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unassign these guys. I don't really need to worry about them anymore. I don't think. I don't want them to really be continuing to, to mine the stone. There's 108 stone there. Yeah, well, that's absolutely fine. Because what I'd actually like to do is I would like to get the saw pit up and running once again. So we're going to assign someone there. I have two additional families available, by the way. And what we're going to do is we're going to put someone on the farmhouse so that they can finally... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you guessed it. They can finally start doing a little bit of farming. And we're going to have wheat. And then we'll, we'll let it get, go fallow in the second year. And uh, technically what we should really do is have an additional field. And maybe even another one on top of that. So that we can literally just go, you know, we can do like a... 
shall we say, a manual crop rotation where we just go, you know, wheat one year in one field, then leave it fallow and then have field and then have wheat in the in the next field. And then in, you know, in the third field, we leave it fallow and then we do it again. And, you know, you, you get what I mean. You basically just go from from point to point to point over and over again. Um, so obviously that is probably going to be something that we would probably want to do but uh yeah well we'll see what happens here hopefully wheat is going to be uh is going to be made here and i'm hopeful that we'll be able to actually get a bakery up and running as well where, where is the bakery actually now that i think about it where is the bakery because i actually don't know let's have a look is it here aha there we go yes we're going to need the windmill uh because grain grain is a thing so yeah so obviously there's the fields there's the farmhouse there's a pasture. We don't need that. And then we obviously have the sheep farm. Workers collect wool. Yep, yeah, of course. And then we are going to be... Yes, so we're, we're going to... Oh, dear. We're going to have to build this. Oh, dear. Oh, no. The windmill. Okay, yes. Yeah, so I'm going to be placing this right by the side of this, I guess. Um... <laughs> Oh dear. Oh no, this is going to be bad, isn't it? This is going to be very bad, but we'll try it out and we'll see what happens. Oh yeah, also, um, I think I have enough timber, right? Don't I have a huge amount of timber? Yeah, I've got 26 timber. So I think the best thing that I can do right now is not build a field, but is actually to go to residential and build some more houses. Oh yes, I know. Okay, so let's see what I can do. Uh, can I do something really, really large here? Yeah, that's actually not too bad. All right, yeah, let's let's do that. And uh, I'm probably not doing this particularly, um, shall we say, particularly efficiently. But as I said to you, that's not really my goal. You know, my goal is to just have a whale of a time and actually just create something that looks relatively fun and kind of cool looking. And that's pretty much it. You know, I'm not really looking to be you know, super efficient or anything like that. And even then, you know, even then I'm I'm not really going for aesthetics either. But I think it I think our village actually looks super cool right now. But I think that's basically ninety-nine percent the game looking really, really cool, rather than what I've done with it. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, that's as usually the thing that happens. Okay, so Forager Hut, are you actually getting berries, sir? Are you actually getting berries? I hope you are. I hope he is. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, we're actually also getting eggs, which is very, very cool. Uh, so I think that's actually something that um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that, actually. I'm pretty happy that we're getting eggs. Now, as you can see, the trees are not actually going to be regrowing in a quick fashion. And that's the reason why I, I'd highly recommend getting a uh, forester's hut as soon as possible. I think it's extremely important, actually to go for a forester's hut really, really fast because the trees are obviously going to be quite realistic in the way that they regrow. It's going to take a huge amount of time. Obviously, it's not going to be completely realistic because trees in real life obviously take years and years and years to regrow. However, you know, this is obviously a simulation, so it's not going to be one-to-one -one realism because that would be, well very very difficult but <laughs> you know anyway the point is what i'm trying to say is build that forester's hut really fast get the logging camp up and running and you're going to have no limit to the amount of timber that you'll have and then you can turn that timber into whatever you want it's going to be so fun it's going to be really really good all right so as you can see look at this plowing progress we're actually doing it very nice look at that that's really really good unfortunately i don't really have an oxen spare which is exactly the main reason why I actually want to sell some stuff so um, I should probably sell some stone shouldn't I but I don't really want to do that because I need to use the stone to upgrade the church and I also need to use the stone to upgrade some other things as well do I need to use it to upgrade this no I don't think so right no generate one regional oh level two burgage plots generate one regional wealth per family per month that's actually insanity. That is an extremely powerful thing. That is very powerful. So if I can get a clothing, uh, yes, if I can get some clothing. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm actually going to wait and hope that our burgage plots are going to be built. Because we need them built, obviously. But once they are built, 
then we're going to be able to assign yet another family over onto the Weaver Workshop. I need to leave one person at least on the construction, one family on the construction at least. And then hopefully we can attract another family. We have 81% people loving us. Look at that. 81% approval rating. Very nice. Really surprised about that. I was, you know, here's the thing. Whenever I play a city builder, I always think the worst. Especially about, you know, the citizens enjoying how we rule the, the village or the colony or whatever it is. I always expect that their happiness is going to be one of the lowest that you'll ever see. And I always expect them to literally go, oh, yes, we really absolutely hate this lord that is helping us. Uh, yes, <laughs> I always expect that. So whenever this happens and we actually get a really, really nice, you know, approval uh, approval rate, I absolutely love that. Oh, no, never mind. It's gone down to 70. It was at 81, but now it's at, now it's at 70. It's because the new family moved in. Okay, we're going to get the Weaver Workshop now. And uh, we can hopefully get some uh, some really, really nice clothing going on. And we are also then going to be able to create a new stall on the marketplace. Or at least I hope that they'll do that. Hopefully, right? I mean, surely they're going to do that, right? Uh, yes. Also, there's only one person uh, doing, the, uh, doing the wheat at the moment, which is probably really, really bad. Is there anyone on these? No. Uh, the forester's hut, I kind of want that guy to continue. The logging camp as well. Forager hut, yes. Woodcutter, yeah, I, I kind of want this guy to continue getting us firewood. The saw pit, obviously we do need people to get planks. Because I do want to sell those planks. And then, apart from that, what else do we have? Well, we have the church. I'm not entirely sure what this guy does in the church, by the way. What is he doing? Oh, he's the grave digger. Oh, okay. I'm actually just going to unhire him for the moment. I don't think that's particularly necessary. Because what I do want to get is I want to upgrade this to a small stone church. And that's the problem. We're going to need... Let me see here. <laughs> oh, yes. We're going to need clay. So the best thing that I can do to get clay is to actually get one of those little mining things. So, this is it. It's a mining pit. I know, I know. Crazy, right? Okay, so basically what we can do... Aha, we're going to have to place it right over this. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, okay. That's very interesting. I was not in, not expecting having to do that, but there you go. Okay, yeah, so it's a mining pit right on top of it. Very nice. And obviously we got the hunter as well. But we need that for the food, right? Yeah, yeah, okay, so fuel is currently not being made for some reason. Why is that? Where is the where is the guy that does that? It's not the... Where, where is that guy? There he is, the woodcutter's lodge. There we go. I put him in a terrible place. Let's just say that. All right, so the clothing stall is now, uh, is now finished. That's actually wonderful. There we go. So we've now fulfilled all of the criteria, or we should have fulfilled all the criteria at least. And as you can see, it is indeed an unlimited work area for the Woodcutter's Lodge. So I'm kind of hoping that he's going to continue doing that, that stuff. At least I hope so. And so, clothing store. Do we not have the yarn? Wait a minute. The wool weavery? I mean, wait a minute. Let me actually just have a look at this supply chain here for a real quick second. Because I'm wondering whether I need something else. Weaver workshop. We, uh, workers use wool to produce yarn. Okay, yeah, that should be fine. We've got people uh, technically on here as well. We've got one sheep, herds, sheep. I mean, this sh this should technically be working. <laughs> what do you bet? What do you bet? I'm unlucky and it's not going to work. Oh, I don't know. Maybe it will. Maybe it won't. Let's speed things up a little bit and see what happens. Um, yeah, I kind of want to get another person on the uh, on the field here. So let's do that. All right. Okay, so what we're going to also need to do is we're going to need to be prepared for <laughs> prepared for the obligatory attack from the raiders. Now, we do have an iron deposit down there, which is inevitably going to be required. It's very, very, it's going to be very required for, um, you know, weapons, because we're not going to be attacking them with uh, with sticks and so on and so forth. Oh, look, there's another, oh, look at that, there's some, there's some armies right there. Oh, that's so cool. Wait a minute, did they just fight? Did I miss the battle? 
Oh dear. I can't believe I missed the battle. Now I'm sad. Oh well, never mind. I mean, I'm sure we're going to be seeing um, seeing more of that as time goes on. But it just goes to show that there, there are battles to be had. And uh, this fellow is obviously trying to stamp out all of, his, all of the bandit corruption in his region. Which, uh, well, suffice it to say, I'm... Whoa, uh, that's actually kind of impressive. <laughs> i got to say, that's actually kind of impressive. Yeah, so they're actually going to all kinds of different places. I have no idea how he was able to get 35 people already, but there you go. We're getting new families. That's great. And I'm actually wondering whether we can actually wait a minute. Maybe they maybe they're going to go in for another fight. I wouldn't mind uh, I wouldn't mind observing it a little bit. I feel like the combat in this game is going to be so incredibly cool. Because everything else is simulated so so smoothly that I feel like it's probably going to be a similar situation there too. My forces should actually be doing a relatively decent job at least without me looking over them all the time, right? So I don't really need to go over there. Ah, there they go. They're going over to these brigands over here. Look at this. Oh yes. Look at this. Okay, wait a minute. It's it's a literal it's a literal battle in the rain. Look at this. Okay, we're going to Oh, look at this. We're going to actually Oh, this is so cool. Oh, we're going to go into cinematic mode. Look at them. Oh, okay. And they're actually going <laughs> to Oh, wow, that is actually very cool. And I love the fact that the, the bandits actually look like real people. I know, I know that sounds... <laughs> that sounds really funny. Because, obviously, they are real people. But what I'm trying to say is... Think about this. Most bandits, if you're thinking about, you know, other games in the genre, they look like... Well, they look like ruffians. They look like actual bandits that are, you know, just some kind of caricature of the profession, which is an honorable one, of course. <laughs> I'm obviously joking. What I'm trying to say is these people right here, these brigands, they look like real people that have just fallen on hard times. Look at that. Look at these guys. Look at these guys. They're actually doing finishing moves and everything on them. But not in a, you know, <laughs> not in an embellished sense. Anyway, you know. And there you go. Okay, so their morale has been broken, of course. And now they're going to be running away. And uh, apparently these guys don't actually want to pursue them or anything like that. And that's it. There you go. There's the battle. Very, very nice indeed. And I'm actually wondering whether they're going to go over here and um, and deal with the brigands' camp. I'm going to assume that they will. But there you go. Anyway, we're back to our back to our little place here, and let's actually see what's happening. Okay, so the the, the wheat is almost done. I actually have no idea whether we're even going to be. It's it's April. I don't know whether that's actually good. Uh, April, May. Frequent raining, seasonal deposits regrow. Okay, yeah, that's absolutely fine. It actually tells you everything you need to know here as well, which is really, really nice. So autumn is when we do the harvesting and the plowing and the sowing and all that wonderful stuff. Okay, so that's actually fine. And we are going to be building this. Is this actually under construction? Yes, it will be. It's going to take a little bit longer. Let's put the construction priority on high here. Uh, even though personally, I'd like to get more, more families. Ah, there you go. Construction is finished on that. That's nice. Okay, yeah. And uh, how is my stone little thing doing here? Yeah, so we've got all the stone that we are going to get from the stone deposit right now. And we don't really need to worry about that as it stands. But what I would like to do is, as I say, I'd like to get these tiles. And we're going to need the, the, the clay. We're going to need the clay from that. So let's put that on very high priority and let's get them to go over there. I actually should get a road, shouldn't I? I should probably get a road to go over there, shouldn't I? That probably makes sense. So let's just do something like this. There we go. I, I really... I, no, no, see, now here's the thing. I really do love the road system. Obviously, there are a number of ways that it could be improved. But I personally feel like it is wonderful the way it is. One way that it could be improved was actually someone in the comments um, saying something like... Uh, what was it now? Automatic. Yeah, there we go. 
automatic generation of roads and pathways where there's a lot of foot traffic. So if a lot of people are walking over that particular area, a road would then appear naturally over time. I think that's really cool. I think that is actually really cool. But another thing that you could do, obviously, is just add a filter that says where all the foot traffic is, and then you could just build it yourself if you wanted to. But, you know, <laughs> one way or another, I think that's a really cool idea. All right, so, yeah, this is also something that we want to do. I'm actually going to be checking my plank situation. Planks are not doing very well. Why are my planks not doing very well right here? Are we, uh, are we, are we not, uh, no, why are we not doing this? Where are my people? They're going home waiting. It's a carpenter. Why are we not getting these things? Is it because we only have one oxen? I'm going to assume that that is indeed the case. Because it's going to be very, very difficult to actually make planks if you can't drag the timber over there, right? So... I could put the livestock on... I, I could put... I, could, I don't know. I could put the ox on permanent... Uh, permanent uh, assignment there, but that's gonna basically halt all other construction. This is the reason why I said to you earlier, if you really want to make good progress, obviously do the first, you know, first initial thing that I that I talked about earlier, where the forester's hut, logging camp, forager hut, uh, well, not the forager hut so much, but the woodcutter's lodge. Get those three buildings, and maybe the saw pit as well if you want planks. But apart from that, what you really want to do is you want to get a second ox and if you have a bunch of planks you're going to be able to sell those planks for cash and then you can get a new ox straight away and you could even it, technically you don't even need to do that you don't even need to sell the planks but because I was a bit of an idiot I uh, obviously spent my initial starter money my initial regional wealth which was really <laughs> That was really bad. That was a really bad idea of of, of mine. But, uh, you know, it, it happens. It happens. Oh, we can actually level this up. There we go. We're going to be upgrading this. And I'm going to be putting this on highest so that this literally can get upgraded as soon as possible so that we can actually start earning some regional wealth automatically. It's going to be extremely important for us to do that. Oh, this also can be. Okay, that's fantastic. Let's do it. Yeah, all of these can actually be upgraded. How much timber do I actually have? I have a lot. Okay, that's really, really nice. And there you go. Okay. This is wonderful. This is really, really good, actually. And we're going to be putting... Um, we're going to be putting two people on the mining pit here. And I need to build one of these clay furnaces. It needs to be refueled once per month. So this is obviously something... How much fuel do I even have? Let's actually just take a quick look here. I have... Wait a minute. 63 firewood. I need to build a charcoal furnace, but I don't think... Do I have any development points? No, I don't. How do I get more development points? That's the question. I guess we're going to have to figure that out as time goes on. Maybe we just need to advance... Oh, yeah, we need to advance our village. I think that's the thing that we need to do, isn't it? As you can see, we need to get burgage plots to level 2 or higher to be able to get a medium village. And this actually provides us with the development point as you can see right there. So yeah, that's going to be extremely important for us. As you see, they're actually uh, doing that right now. I love that. Let's speed things up a little bit. And yeah, so we need to get a, a clay furnace. So let's do that. And let's build the clay furnace. Uh, technically, we could do it right here. But I'm not sure if that's a good idea. I think maybe it would be a better idea to put it over here. Or better yet, maybe here. Somewhere like this, I guess. There we go. There we go. We're, get, we're getting more. We're getting more families. We're getting more families. This is absolutely perfect. And let's just build. Uh, I don't even know whether a road is even necessary here. To be honest, is it? Is a road actually necessary there? I don't know. It depends. It depends on how many people actually walk across the field here. They might. You know, it's there's no sign that says keep off the grass. And you think they're not going to. <laughs> just completely ignore that? Yeah, they're probably just going to ignore that, right? Anyway, yeah, my forces are actually not doing too badly now. As you can see, they have leveled up to two, and we are now starting to get some regional wealth as it is. So that's wonderful. Now, a trading... Uh, we could do... The planks are actually pretty good. The planks are going to sell for a pretty significant amount. Let's actually do an export of this. 
Settlement level has increased, as you can see right there. That's really nice. Okay, so we have a development point. Let me actually just um, slow this down real quick, just to make sure I'm not going too fast, just in case I mess up in some way. Doubles the capacity of all berry deposits. That's actually insanity. That is really, really powerful if you have a berry deposit, which we do. So it could be really useful for us to do that. We could also get other things like a bakery extension. Produces bread from flour with twice the efficiency of the communal oven. Converts all inhabitants to artisans, locking them from being assigned to other jobs. That's obviously something to bear in mind. Uh, what else do we have here? Charcoal burning. Yeah, that's really useful too. Enables blacksmiths to craft helmets. Wow. Okay. Uh, establishing a new trade route always costs a maximum of 25 regional wealth. That's that's actually incredible. That is one of the most powerful things that you could take. Actually, you know what's so funny about this? This research tree actually seems super, super powerful in pretty much every every respect. Sheep grazing on the pastures slowly multiply. What? Yes, I'm going to take that. Sheep grazing on the pastures slowly multiply. I, I really want that. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. Does it not need two sheep to actually actually make that work? Or are they just going to do, you know, whatever it's called, osmosis? Is it osmosis that they do? <laughs> I don't know. Are they going to just multiply by itself? Are they just going to do like single cells? I don't even know what. Anyway, <laughs> hopefully they will. Who knows? Uh, but yeah, we have the clay furnace almost up and running. We've got, we needed stone for that, by the way. And our clay is currently not too bad, actually. Not too bad. Now, if we can just sell the planks for, uh, well, sell five planks, that's going to get me 10 gold. And then I should have enough to be able to purchase an, a new ox. And I'm going to actually do that right now. Let's just import one of these. Let's get that. And technically, and this is what I, this is what I said to you before, Technically, you should be able to get an oxen much, much faster. Because you start with, I think it is 40 or 50 regional wealth. And in that case, you would very easily be able to import one of these oxen almost immediately. So if you want to really have a super, super fast start, just make sure you do that. And then you're going to be absolutely fine. But obviously, I did the thing where I, you know, got a chicken coop, which cost me 25 regional wealth which is which is very expensive that's super expensive isn't it yeah yeah so not not the best idea and my marketplace is absolutely massive as well by the way as you can quite clearly tell so maybe not the best idea for me to make it so large but you can learn from my mistakes if you so desire you don't have to of course although to be fair i, I think in general if you're gonna make a huge city it's probably going to be useful, you know. It's probably going to be useful in some way or another. But maybe there's going to be multiple marketplaces. Maybe having multiple marketplaces could be a good idea. I don't know. But yeah, as you can see, we've got wild animals 10 out of 20 here. Clay deposit is actually starting to now run out. I'm actually not entirely sure. Does this get replenished? It's highly unlikely that this is going to get replenished, right? Re requires refueling. Fuel reserves. Not sure if I have... I have 59 firewood. Is it actually doing the thing that I want it to do? Yes, it is. He is actually doing it. Okay, so that's good at least. Right. Okay, and look at that. I've got 13 regional wealth now. 13, because we are actually getting some from our Burgage Plots level 2. And we are getting, uh, well, from a number of other places as well. Okay, for some reason this is not being affected by the clothing store supply. Enough supply of any of the following materials. Ah, it's just because we don't have um, enough wool, I assume. Yeah, we don't have enough wool, which is a bit weird. I'm not sure why. I guess it's because we only have one sheep. <laughs> I guess that's the reason, right? Anyway, I should have 20, uh, 20 gold relatively soon, actually. 20 regional wealth. And that should actually enable us to do some really amazing things. So I am going to just wait for one more trade and then I'll disable this, I think. And the uh, the windmill is now done, which is wonderful. So that means that when we actually get this wheat done, I should then be able to create... What is it again? 
grain, right? Grain or, or flour or something like that? Grain? Yeah, no, grain into flour into bread, right? That's how it goes. So that should be amazing. Um, let me just see here. Uh, wait a minute, where is it? It's going to be under residential, is it not? It's going to be under something like that. There's a corpse pit. No one's dead yet. <laughs> no one's dead yet. Not yet, at least. Okay, there we go. There's the communal oven. Workers use flour to produce bread. Obviously, I could have used my development point to make double the amount of bread, which may have actually been a good idea. But I'm going to build this right here. Um, actually, you know what? I'm, I'm a bit worried about actually building this too close to the windmill. But it should be fine, right? I, I don't think it's going to affect it too much. No, I don't think so. I mean, this this thing's efficiency was 99%. So it should be really, really good, right? Hopefully. Hopefully it's going to be fine. Okay, so obviously we're going to be making roof tiles. And the, the church is almost going to be ready. Oh, yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. I've actually just traded away all of our planks as well, which is very, very bad of me. But it's fine because we do have someone working on the planks as it is. So hopefully that's going to be okay. A bandit camp was sighted. Where is it? Not within our lands, as you can see. Our lands are over here. So that's fine. There's the trade point. <laughs> okay, yeah. So that should be fine. Do I need more people on berries, by the way? We have no fuel. We're getting such little fuel. Why are we getting so little fuel? I think we need to... Wait a minute. Do we need more people on this? I'm going to put more people on the woodcutter's lodge. I need more firewood super, super badly, actually. Okay, how are my burgage plots doing? Okay, this one's actually still under construction. There's actually two still under construction. So that's obviously a pretty big deal. And the raiders are coming in 228 days. Oh yeah, you guessed it. We're probably going to have some issues. Maybe. Maybe we'll have some issues. I don't know. Okay, there we go. Firewood stool has been constructed. Another one. <laughs> okay, another one. All right. And uh, yeah, we should probably get some more, shouldn't we? I should probably... I'm actually not entirely sure whether we should expand. I should expand the roads. Is this a road right here? It goes nowhere. It goes nowhere, this road. Oh, that's interesting. All right, we should probably connect it. There we go. That's useful. All right, so we're otherwise going to just do this now. We're just going to go into a nice little nice little loop right here. And then we're going to be... Hmm, I'm actually not sure. We could do something like this. Something like that, I guess. And we're not really... That's the thing. I'm not really doing this super, super, you know, scientifically or whatever. But I'm just, you know, I'm just trying to do the best that I can here. Ah, yes. We don't even need um, any more clay, as far as I'm aware. This is, a, this is being claimed by someone. <laughs> uh, that is so funny. This guy... Where, 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 where is that even, actually? Wait a minute. Where is that? It's over here. Okay, yeah. It's being claimed by this fellow. Yeah, as you can see, he's doing he's doing very well. Let's just say that. He's doing very, very nicely. But um, that doesn't mean that we're not going to be able to catch him, you know? That doesn't mean that we're not going to be able to catch him. We might be able to do something really, really cool here. Okay, so we have enough clay as well now. So I'm gonna actually going to unsign the person from that. And we are going to be upgrading our, uh, our thing as soon as we have the planks. Upgrading our, uh, our, little, uh, our little church here. I have no idea whether this is actually going to make any difference, by the way. I have no clue whether this is going to be any good. But we're going to put some more people on the forager hut, too. Uh, because we have 61 out of 120 here. And when it becomes winter, it's going to be very important that we do something with that. Oh, yes. Also, we need to be a little bit careful here. I can't just let it run away with me. So, let's just... Wait a minute. What? Wait a minute. That's not what I wanted. I wanted residential. I'm an imbecile. There we go. Yes, I want residential, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, wait a minute. I should probably do this all the way along here. There we go. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Look at how cool that looks. That's, that's looking real nice. Okay. I love that. 
Um, do we have enough um, water in the well, by the way? It seems like the well does not dry up or anything like that. I should probably take a look at that, actually, though. Ah. Is that actually... Is that actually having a problem, or do I need to build another one? You know what? I'm going to build another one. Going to build it. Yeah, I guess. I just want to make sure, okay? I just want to make sure that they have access to, to water if they need it. And they don't have to walk a huge amount of huge amount of distance, I suppose. Alright, so we're doing okay. We've got a lot of people right now. We've got a lot of people. And I think the best... Actually, the next best thing for us right here is to actually start concentrating on getting some weapons. So let's try to do that, shall we? So how do we do that? Well... <laughs> <laughs> uh, your guess is as good as mine. So let's actually have a look. Let's have a... Ooh, okay, yeah. To craft tools. We, say, we need a... Okay, wait a minute. <laughs> okay, let me get this straight. We need an iron mining pit, which is all the way down here. And I need an oxen. Do I not have the oxen yet? No, because I am an imbecile and I did not actually get someone on here. Hmm. That's not so good. Yes, that's a little bit problematic. Ah, we can upgrade the church. There we go. It's upgrading. Wonderful. Perfect. I am so pleased about that, actually. All right, so there's the iron deposit. So we need to get that up and running as soon as possible. So let's get the mining pit here. And we need to put it around about there there we go all right so this is going to be extremely important for us so i'm actually going to put this on highest priority super super fast the storehouse is now full right well that doesn't matter too much that's actually perfectly fine um let's just build another one uh do i do i need do i need to build another one i guess right i mean it makes sense for me to build another one so I, I guess I'll just build that. I don't even know where to build that, to be honest, because I actually have no space or no space very easily accessible. Probably here. I don't know. I guess. Uh, yeah, I'm a little bit worried now, actually. I'm, I'm thinking that we might have an issue. We might have a bit of an issue because look at this. If I create units, let, let's actually just try and create some units right now. OK, so what do we want to get? Well, we probably want to get some footmen. I do actually have weapons. It, are those spears? Ah, those are spears. So what about spear militia? So if I create this, the male villagers will be evenly distributed between all militia units. They will then try to find the required equipment. The weapon and shield depends on the unit type, while the maximum quality of body armor and helmet depends on the villagers' residential level. After bringing all the necessary equipment home, the unit recruits are marked as ready to rally. Only then will you be able to rally your unit. Right. Okay, so as you can see right here, we need another bunch of large shields and spears, as you can see. Now, I'm actually not entirely sure. H how do we how do we get that? How do we get the uh <laughs> We're going to Are we going to have to trade for that? No, surely not, right? Hmm. I kind of think maybe we will have to. Because from my perspective, I'm not seeing anything right now. I'm not seeing anything like that. So I'm going to assume... Uh, where's the blacksmith? That's the thing. Where, where's the blacksmith? Because we've got the malt house, the tannery, the weaver workshop, the dyes workshop, the clay fern. Ah, there's the smithy. All right. The smithy is probably going to be the guy. All right. So, yeah, we're going to need the bloomery first, of course. And we're going to have to place that round about here. I'm going to place that here. And we're going to have to place the smithy right next door. Okay. And, uh, yeah, so we need the iron thing built as soon as possible. And we need the oxen as well. Okay, finally, we're getting an oxen. Okay, that's wonderful. That is that is probably the greatest thing that we needed. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to be able to do this, actually. Wait a minute. I'm going to click on help right now because I, I, I want to I wanna see whether we can actually get... <laughs> I need I need uh, I need weapons. I need we weapons, friends. I need weapons. Military. There we go. Shields. 
Okay, that doesn't actually help me. <laughs> that doesn't actually help me. Okay, wait a minute. Here we go. Yes, when a weapon and shield of a player was assigned to him, okay. An availability of goods in the region. Well, unfortunately, I don't have the ability to outfit all of my people. Um, so that's pick a rallying spot and mobilize this unit for combat. Well, I, I, I guess I could get 20 of them. I mean, I can get 20 of them, but I don't know whether that actually, um, whether that's actually going to be effective. All the assigned units will return to the recruitment pool. I mean, I could technically just do that, but I'm, I'm just going to leave it the way it is for the moment. And we're just going to see what happens, but I'm going to need to take some pretty decisive action uh, a little bit later on. Uh, but my, uh, my church is under construction right now. Mercenary companies? Mm, I could get some mercenary companies, couldn't I? Yeah, I could do that. Maybe. I could also upgrade this. There we go. We're getting more families joining as well. I mean, I'm, I'm actually going at a pretty decent pace right here. Uh, yeah, everything seems to be working so much better than it was earlier. But I guess that's just because I'm getting into the swing of things, as it were. And there we go. Look at this. We're actually getting some wheat. That's fantastic. And now we can get people on the windmill. Let's get people on the windmill right here. And the communal oven. Let's get people on that too. Because, you know, I just want to make sure that they're ready. You know, so they're right there. And now we have another oxen. Yes, look at that. We have two oxen now. So that's wonderful. Yeah, that is really, really cool. Yeah, look at that. See, we have two oxen. And our stable space is two out of three. So technically, I could even get another one if I wanted to. Okay, generic storage is full of something. Of what? Of this? Yes, I, I, yeah, I know that, um, unfortunately. I'm not sure how I can... Ah, upgrade to a large... Oh! Oh, hello! Let's do that! Let's upgrade that. And let's actually make it highest. So I didn't even need to build a new one. So let's actually d demolish that. Don't need to build a new storehouse. I thought not. I thought that would be a bit weird to go for another one. But, I mean, it doesn't... That's the thing. It doesn't really make that much of a difference building another one. But... The upgrade is significant. Very, very useful. And, uh, yeah, all we need to do is just drag a bunch of timber over there and it should be absolutely fine. Okay, yeah, so... New mercenary companies are available as well. Technically, I could hire mercenaries. That is something that I could do, as you can see right here. Let's actually have a look. How much are mercenaries? 90! Oh, ho, ho. okay. Oh, well, no, 30 as well. I can hire brigands. <laughs> I can hire brigands. That is probably not the best idea. Light mercenary infantry. Uh, okay, yeah. So basically, you can do a, a wide variety of different avenues of progression. So what you could do, technically, is you could focus on making regional wealth which would basically be exporting pretty much everything that you make, which would be pretty awesome, I think. That would be kind of fun. Or you could go the other route, which I'm trying to do, and that is creating your own. Creating your own shields and so on and so forth. And that could also be somewhat useful. Uh, the mining pit is done. Okay, fantastic. Thank you very much for telling me about that. And now let's get, uh, let's get two people on this. We're going to need... Well, it's going to be pretty... It's going to be pretty important, actually, that we get this as soon as possible. Um, the clay deposit thing, we're not really needing that that much. Construction upgrade is now complete. That's wonderful. So the large storehouse now has an insane amount of space, which is even better. That's great. We didn't even need another person on this, actually, so I could probably unassign that other, other fellow so that we have two people doing the construction because we need at least two families now to run the oxen around and everything. So it's going to be pretty important. And we have 130 days remaining. Don't worry, I'm keeping a big eye on that. I have a lack of administ administrative buildings? Really? I have no idea what that means. Okay, we're going to have a look. We're going to have a look. Let's, let's learn. Let's learn together. Okay, we need a manor. Okay. The starting retinue will join you in your palace for free. All right. What, what do I need there? Is that is that planks? I only have I only have ten planks. Right. How are my planks actually doing right now? I mean, firewood is currently doing really badly for some reason. 
Why are people not doing this? Are people not actually... Wait, wait a minute. This is the woodcutter's lodge. This is supposed to be cutting firewood. They are doing it. Yeah, they are doing it. So why is my fuel not going up? It's because every... Oh, it's because I have such a... Oh, no. Okay, I'm going to need another one. Aren't I? I'm going to need another one. Wait, let's have a look. Yeah, I have 19 timber. My planks? How? how where, where is, where's the plank person? Uh, the saw pit. Oh, no, there we go. Okay, construction reserve. Let's put a construction reserve of 20. Because um, we need we need that, right? Let's put another person on this, I guess. Oh, winter is now approaching. Isn't that wonderful? Yes, I love that. Oh, uh, yes. Okay, so thankfully we are now making... Yeah, look at that. We are actually making bread. Or at least I hope we are. I guess we will be at some point. And uh, we, this also requires refueling. So that's a bit of a problem. Okay, what I want to do is I want to... Can I disable this in some way? Is there some way for me to say, don't refuel this? Can I click on that? No, that doesn't make any difference. Okay, yeah, well, that's that's fine. Okay, so winter's approaching now, which is really bad, because I only have 11 months worth of food. I do have six months worth of fuel, which I think is probably enough, but maybe not, actually. Maybe it isn't actually going to be enough. I don't know. Or maybe I've expanded too fast. That might be a bit of a problem. Okay, well, whatever the case, I am actually going to be building a road. I don't know where to build the road, though. Should I build it like this? Is that stupid? Yeah, I think so. Probably is. Uh, what about if I... Uh, can I do it through here? Can I do this? Oh, this is, this is so bad. I don't know. I'm not sure if I should really do that, to be honest. Oh, no. Okay, yeah, I, I, I don't know what's quicker. I mean, it, it's, here's the thing. I don't want to build a road right through the forest. In my opinion, that's going to be a pretty bad idea. I mean, technically, I could do that if I avoid the, the wild animal spot. As you can see, there you go. Okay, that might actually be somewhat, somewhat good. Because here's the thing. If you build too close to the wild animals, they will migrate away from that position. And that is going to be exceptionally bad, as you might expect. Okay, construction finished on the well. That's great. Okay, yeah, well, we have 112 days. Things are going very fast, as you can quite clearly see. And our berry deposit has now gone away. So let's get the forager hut uh, reduced a little bit. Uh, actually, there, are, there, were, there were two people actually doing the stalls, but we can only... I mean, we don't even need that many, do we? I don't think we need that many. And my regional wealth is at 20 now, almost. The small church is almost done. And what about the regional, uh, the, this thing? Oh yeah, we need 20 planks. I have 15 right now. So uh, they are they're, they are actually getting the 20 planks, which is nice. Um, but they're using it. They're using planks for the small church. Obviously, they already did that. So that's obviously nice. And if I can get a mana up and running, that would be so cool, wouldn't it? It would be really cool to get a mana. I have no idea where to build it, because <laughs> where do I build it? I don't know. I guess I'll just build it somewhere random. I should have probably saved a space in the middle uh, for the manor. But yeah, there you go. All right, so we can now... Oh, it's a small building. All right. <laughs> I was actually thinking it would be massive, but yeah. All right, okay. Uh, let's build it. Let's build it here on the outskirts of town or something like that. Oh, wait, what does this do? Okay, so this is a work in progress feature. Okay, <laughs> it's a castle planner. Oh yeah, you can edit the layout of your castle and plan the construction of new wings and towers. When you press commit, the old layout will disappear and the new one will be constructed. So basically, you can actually create things however you so desire. So if you take a look here, we can actually build an outer tower here. And you can do this and so on and so forth. But this is obviously a work in progress. So do bear in mind that this is probably not how it's going to look as time goes on. Because let's face it, this is a um, small little small little building right here. And it's probably going to look a little bit different as time goes on. And you can also build walls and gates as well. Uh, but for me personally, I'm actually just going to build this. I don't really see the need for anything else. There is a tax office here too, which you can obviously build as well. But we're just going to commit this. The most simple building in the world. I'm I'm perfectly happy with that. Thank you. Generic storage is full. Where? 
The saw pit? Okay, uh, why are people not doing that? You should get on that, sir. Uh, the construction reserve is on 20. I should probably put it on zero, shouldn't I? Just put it on zero and just let people use, use the planks however they want to use them. We've got 208 berries. I have seven months worth of fuel, which is probably pretty decent. And this needs refueling. Let's... Uh, yeah, let's actually start getting some smithies on this. Start getting some people on this stuff. I don't know whether this is actually going to make any difference whatsoever, by the way. Um, because I don't know what this actually does. That's the thing. Because we know that it, it makes tools. But that's it. I actually don't know how to make weapons or anything like that. I, am, I, am I silly? I guess. I don't know. I mean, is there something that I can do here, for example? Oh, uh, yeah, wait. I, I do want to keep someone on that. Okay, so wait a second, wait a second. What about if I can... Aha, I can import stuff. But look at how look at how expensive this is. Literally, look at how expensive this is. This is impossible for me. This is absolutely impossible for me. So I'm not entirely sure. Okay, you know what I'm actually going to try? Let's try to rally. I'm going to try to rally right now. Because I want to see how the rally actually works. Okay, wait a minute. Ah, moving your units. Okay, so I can actually call for an army with just 20. It doesn't have to actually be a full army. All right, that actually makes everything so much simpler for us. So you select units and then hold and drag to select multiple. You command them with the right mouse button, hold and drag to form a line, hold alt while dragging to keep the formation when multiple units are commanded. Hold control to draw waypoints for a single squad. Very nice and simple controls, I love that. The combat strength of your units depends on many factors. Stances. Check the army tab below to set them. All have pros and cons. Morale is the willingness to fight. If it reaches critical points, some stances become unavailable. And eventually the unit will flee from battle. Fatigue. As soldiers become tired when running and fighting, when exhausted they can no longer run or fight well. And effectiveness. Is the attack and defense multiplier. The unit might have a hard time fighting uphill or archers struggle while shooting in the rain. All right, very cool. So the stances. So as you can see right here, they currently have an effectiveness of 87%. Their fatigue is reducing by 6% and their cohesion is minus 7%. Not entirely sure why that's happening, but there you go. Uh, what's their stances? So yeah, as you can see, their stance at the moment is default. You can go for missile alert, which allows them to watch for enemy missiles. You can give ground that slowly pushes the formation line backward, luring the enemy to follow. And you can also stand your ground, defense is doubled, but attack frequency is halved, and push forward, where soldiers try to push forward with their full force. Yeah. Okay. Disband unit. Um, yeah. I'm yeah no I don't need to I don't need to command them anymore okay yeah so um that obviously actually put everything to a halt every single thing in my village was just like yeah okay we're not doing anything anymore uh which is not exactly great but I just wanted to test it out to make sure that we could actually get a defense up and running if we needed to because I'm severely worried about the raiders coming and I kind of think that maybe I'm going to lose just literally from that but I can hope that's not the case. Hopefully that's not the case, right? So we'll see what happens. Okay, so otherwise, apart from that, I do want to continue creating planks. And I also want to get more woodcutters. I, I wonder whether I should get more people. Should I, should I literally get... Is it necessary? Do I need another? Maybe I do. I'm gonna get another one. Let's build another one. I'm not sure whether this is necessary, but I need to get more firewood. Or do I? I mean, that's the thing. I don't know. I don't actually know. I I, I don't think I do, but I'm gonna I'm gonna try it nevertheless. I'm just gonna see whether it's necessary. Okay, work area is empty. Why? The forager hut? Oh yeah, I need to disable that because there is actually nothing to be done here. So. Thank you very much for letting me know, game. That is very, very, very useful. Yes. 
And we uh, also want to disable people for the farmhouse because this is going to be fallow for the next year now. Um, we should probably put it on fallow again, to be honest. Yeah, I should. Pr I, I mean, technically, I should have another another couple of fields, to be honest. Um, but I've just been distracted with basically everything else. I've just been trying to get iron as much as I can. And uh, try to get tools and so on. And uh, the raiders are near. Where, where are the raiders? Where are they? I don't know. I can't tell. So I guess they're just going to come in randomly at some point And they're going to attack. And it's going to be... Oh, policies unlocked. Click on the taxes tab after selecting your mana to set, 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 to set levels of taxation. Taxes can boost your treasury and influence at the cost of making your population poorer. Right, okay. So I've got a mana now, which is actually wonderful. And taxes. Okay, so, well, there's obviously going to be a percentage of supply, a surplus food that is given to the church in return for influence. Okay. Land tax. Okay, wait. Predicted approval loss, 7. Okay, it goes up by 7 every single time. So let's tax them by 100% like real life. No. <laughs> no, let's not do that. Let's not do that. Oh, no, I don't want to I don't want to tax them by 20. I'm going to tax them by 10% 10, 10 I guess. Yeah, I'll tax them by 10% or something like that. Did I actually just tax them by by like 90% by mistake? Did I literally just do that by mistake? I don't know. But the tithe is going to be let's actually have a look here. Um I guess we'll do a 5%. I actually don't know. 10% tithe, I guess. I don't actually know what the best thing is to go for here. So, uh, yeah, we're just going to have to leave it like that, I suppose. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of hoping that I'm going to get some more regional wealth. Why, why am I not getting more regional wealth? Because I do want to get a second oxen. Did I not get it? Oh, I've got a second one. Do, no, no, I mean a third oxen, that is. Sorry. I wanted to get a third. Yes. Do I have one? No, I don't. Why don't I have a third one? Oh, it's because I haven't selected it. Ah, oh, there we go. Yes. Imbecilic behavior. Uh, isn't that wonderful? All right. Well, it's fine. We are We are still okay. We are We are okay. Um, yeah. So, getting fuel supplies. So we've got some servants now as well. We have some servants. So the land tax, uh, yeah, so obviously my approval rating went down a huge amount because I, um, I've joked around with the land tax. Uh, but that's okay, I guess, because I have five in the treasury now. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I don't really care about my own personal wealth, to be honest. I only care about my people's wealth. So, you know, because here's the funny thing, right? If a population is happy, then you know what's going to happen? They're going to be the most dangerous individuals in the land. They will literally be able to murder and kill any attacker and conquer any region because they are pleased to do that for their land. You understand? You see? You see? You know, that's, that's, that's exactly what's going to happen. Because if they are unhappy... Well, they're not going to be pleased to do that. And they're going to be more likely to just run away from the battle in general. That's what happens, you know, if you desert. You know, if you have a deserter from an army, you've got to, you know, you've got to think to yourself, well, why are they deserting? They're deserting because they're unhappy. So, of course, that's the reason. Anyway, um, the logging camp, we have log storage going on here. That's absolutely fine, obviously. I don't have enough money at the moment for some reason. I'm not sure why. I could technically trade some planks. Uh, I don't. I don't really want to trade planks, just in case I actually need to, you know, build something. Yeah. Well, this is looking okay right now. Uh, we don't actually need to do anything with the windmill any further. So let's unassign that. The weaver's workshop. I don't even know whether they're doing anything with that. I mean, we have one sheep still. We should probably put more people on the storehouse, shouldn't we? Let's put two people on the storehouse. That seems to maybe make a bit of a difference. We've got seven seven months worth of fuel, which is going to easily take us through what we need. And we have policies available. Okay, how do I select the policies? Did I actually just... Did, did I not do that already by going to the taxes tab here? Or do I need to go through somewhere else? Ah, there we go. Okay, I, I'm... Yes, I didn't. I didn't realize that this was unlocked now. Okay, so wild animals on rich deposits breed twice as fast at the cost of 50% reduced yields from crops or 
Citizens skip every fifth meal and reduces food consumption, but decreases approval. Okay. <laughs> Do I want to select either of these? Not really. Is there any other option? Uh, okay, fine. We're going to have to sign this policy then. Skip every fifth meal. I'm not a big fan of that, to be honest. Taxation is reducing things by 14%. I don't know why that is, because I actually just... Uh, it says predicted by... Huh. I mean, it should be okay. I mean, that's the funny thing. I'm going to need percentage of surplus food that is given to the church in return for influence. How much am I actually going to get, though? That's the question. I actually don't know. I don't know how much influence I'm going to get. Because what I really want to do is I want to get a thousand influence so that we can actually expand. Exposed stocks are getting soaked. Oh, well, that's not very good. But it's, I mean, does it matter? It's iron. Does it matter if it gets wet? Surely it doesn't matter. But as you can see, we've got a bunch of people actually transporting that stuff already. So I guess I'll literally just get a load of people on this because I can. I mean, I have a bunch of space, right? So maybe that's going to be okay. I don't think we really need to increase our, you know, the size of our village at the moment. Um, because I think that we might over expand. And if we overexpand, you know what's going to happen? We're going to have some issues. Oh yeah, we're going to have some issues with our food situation. Because I'm barely being able to basically survive through the winter at the moment, I think. I mean, eh, barely is a bit of a, eh, a bit of a loose definition of that. Because I feel like we're actually not doing too badly, to be honest. I think we're doing okay. But if you think about the fact that we, we, we didn't make any bread... Why are we not making any bread? Can we make some bread? Uh, we are making the bread, but people are eating it instantly. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, I, I technically would have taken the other thing, by the way. I would have taken the uh, wild animals benefit if my wild animals were actually on a rich deposit, but they're not, obviously. So, you know, I would have taken that other policy if uh, that was applicable for us. But it wasn't so unfortunate for me, eh? Anyway, um, I think the best thing for me to do right now is to actually do a little bit of upgrading with these things. So let's do it. I mean, we got a bunch of uh, yeah, we got a bunch of timber, so I might as well do that. Our requirements not met for some reason. The clothing store supply. Why is the clothing store supply not good enough? I guess it's because um, we just don't have enough. <laughs> we just don't have enough wool uh, from the weaver's workshop. Do I need another person on this? No, that's not really going to make any difference by the looks of things. Or, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it owns a market stall, basically. Uh, that's kind of the thing that I'm I'm trying to go for there. Maybe we need another sheep, but then I'm going to get obsessed with sheep again, and that's probably not going to be the best idea. Ah, there we go. We might be able to actually get an ox now. Yes. Trade for another ox. Yes. Settlement level has now been increased once again. Ooh, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Very nice. Okay, so let's actually just decrease that for a real quick second. And let's take a look at what we're going to go for. We can actually get an apple orchard. Apple harvest happens around September every year until the trees are fully grown, which takes around three years. See, there we go. That's, that's a little bit more realistic. The orchards produce only a fraction of the yield. That's pretty crazy. All right, so we've got a bunch of other things that we could go for here. Um, or we could go for something else like charcoal burning. I'm thinking charcoal burning right now, actually. I'm thinking that. Or we could get helmets. Eh, do we want to get helmets? I don't know. <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe it would be good. But I'm kind of thinking charcoal burning right now. Forest management would be amazing too. Oh, all of these are so, so good, really. All of these are absolutely amazing. So I'm thinking we're going to go for charcoal burning because our fuel situation is the thing that is mostly a uh, cause for concern. But we're not going to have any bread next year. So I'm also thinking about berry deposits. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to go for the charcoal burning here. I personally feel like that's going to be a little bit more useful for us, potentially, even though I actually am now starting to get more, more fuel. Oh, dear. 
Oh, uh, no. Okay, fine, fine. Well, whatever the case. Um, yeah, so firewood into charcoal, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to build one of those. Where is it, by the way? Where is that going to be? I have no idea. Residential? Is it under residential? Ah, yeah, that's actually something that I need to do. I need to get a tavern. A tavern would be very useful. We've got food carts right here. Another marketplace. Where is that thing? There it is. There's the charcoal kiln. Okay. And where do I want to place it? Well, I have no idea, actually. I guess I'll place it around about here. Actually, that's way too close to the berries, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Okay, fine. We'll place it here then, I guess. Way too close to the berries for my liking, but sure. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's going to give us double the fuel. I mean, that's pretty good. And look at that. Now we have three oxen, too. Um, so what I want to do, actually, is I want to get an additional... Uh, additional hitching post. Provides one stable space. Is there not anything that I can do to actually increase that? And what's this? A pack station. Use this building to set up a barter connection, allowing you to send and receive goods between this and another region in your command. Uh, well, obviously, I don't have that at the moment. And as you can see, we're actually getting 10 influence per, um, <laughs> per month, I think. Per month. Oh, dear. Uh, that's not particularly good, is it? Okay. Let's place another hitching spot there. Another one there. Let's just place a bunch because I, you know, I obviously want to get more oxen as time goes on. Um, but yeah, I'm probably going to just be staying with three for the moment. I think we only need really three, don't we? I think so. And, uh, yeah, a bandit camp was sighted. Oh, right. Uh, where is it? Is it in our region? Oh, it's actually close to our region. We could potentially get our soldiers and go and fight it. What do you think? Shall we go and fight it? Well, we're going to leave that for the next episode. If you want to check out Man of Lords, there's a link in the description. I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.